Hello everyone and welcome to a new edition of Women's World. Today is a very special edition. We are celebrating with you uh, the uh, Egyptian Women's Day. Uh, last week we were celebrating uh, the International Women's Day. Today is the day where we celebrate the Egyptian women and we salute them for all their efforts and contributions uh, throughout history. And today, March been chosen to uh, be the uh, National Women's Day here in Egypt. We will be celebrating uh, in a very special way. We will be hosting two very uh, Egyptian prominent ladies, but right after the break, I'll tell you more. Welcome back. As I mentioned earlier, today is going to be a very special edition of the program. We will be hosting here in the studio two very Egyptian, uh, two very prominent Egyptian ladies. They have contributions here in Egypt and worldwide, of course. We will be hosting Dr. Mona Zaki, Professor of Business at the American University in Cairo. And uh, she is also strategic thinking and international marketing expert. Later in the show, we'll be hosting Dr. Ghad Al-Wakil, Professor of Philosophy. And we will be talking to both ladies uh, about the contribution of uh, Egyptian women. How can we develop, uh, how can we achieve more development for uh, Egyptian uh, women? We will also be talking about the obstacles uh, hindering uh, the development of Egyptian women. This, of course, and much more, we'll be also having special reports. We'll have a, a special report uh, regarding uh, the uh, Egyptian Women's Day. And we will also have a look at the press and select some interesting news for women right after the break. <laughs> back time now to take a look at the press and check out some interesting news for women and we start off with news uh, from the National Council for Women which holds a training session on managing election campaigns for female candidates. The NCW organized a workshop and training program in Cairo entitled Management of Election Campaigns for Female Candidates in Parliamentary Elections. Participants stress the importance of giving women equal chances as men in the running for parliamentary seats. 
And we move on. Ambassador Mona Omar, Secretary General of the National Council for Women, said that political rights of Egyptian women still not fully regained. Ambassador Omar was speaking at the inauguration of the training program Management of Election Campaigns for Female Candidates in Parliamentary Elections. She said that women representation in decision-making posts around the world is still far short of ambitions. National forces hold events to honor Palestinian women on the International Women's Day. A number of political and national bodies celebrated the event, lauding the sacrifices by Palestinian women. The Ministry of Information stressed that the government is committed to implementing all the international treaties related to women and to introducing laws that would guarantee the end to all types of discrimination against women. And on International Women's Day, women are up for the competition. Uh, this is a movement in Tunisia that honors female media personnel and activates the Amna or SAFE Forum. The movement held a conference over women's image in the media and means of boosting the role of women in transitional societies. Moving on to Iraq, where the Iraqi Institute celebrates Women's Day. The Iraqi Institute organized a celebration attended by senior officials, including the Prime Minister's counselor and representatives of NGOs to mark Women's Day. During the gathering, the role of Iraqi women in the social, political and cultural fields was hailed. And right now we're going uh, to tell you a little bit uh, more about the challenges facing Egyptian women and of course their contribution with my dear guest Dr. Mona Zaki, Professor of Business at the American University in Cairo and Strategic Thinking and International Marketing Expert. Good to have you with us Dr. Mona. Thank, Thank you very much for coming. Thank you, very much. Thank you so much. Uh, now uh, as um, um, uh, Strategic Thinking and International Marketing Expert, how do you see the current status of women? Uh, the current status of women in general uh, is getting better worldwide because I can see really uh, some influence of women worldwide in the decision-making process but the current status of women in the Middle East needs a lot of uh, reco uh, reconsideration mm -hmm. so uh, when I say the um, when when you asked about challenges yes. in fact uh, before going through this, I really, uh, with all respect, I pay tribute to all mothers who lost their sons and daughters in the latest violent attacks. Mm -hmm. For the last few years, we've been having lots of miseries, lots of um, martyrs, and uh, on all levels, army, police, uh, civilians, violence has been... Uh, really the uh, the normal case every in our everyday life mm -hmm. and uh, i believe women can contribute to reduce this kind of violence by being more influential yes on their men okay speaking about more <laughs> influential uh, you stretched your uh, influence and your career from egypt to the whole world and I want to talk to you about that how you uh, faced such challenge and how you became so successful in your career but we're going to take a look at your profile first and then we'll be right back stay with us
Welcome back. As we have seen in your profile, you teach students at the American University in Cairo. You have been there in the streets during uh, the revolutions, uh, taking part in the political uh, scene. Uh, you took part in several uh, conferences uh, worldwide. So doing all this and being a mother and a wife, how can an Egyptian woman achieve such balance? It's not impossible. You can do all this. The first step you have to really enjoy that you believe in the power of faith. Mm. I can do it. You have a dream and you do your best to achieve it and you trust God for the rest. You do your best. And here comes the strategic thinking influence here. Because what is strategic thinking? You build a vision. You have to be visionary. Mm. You have a personal vision and you have a professional vision and you have a national vision, mm. you see? So I would really um, uh, encourage every woman, number one, to be proud of being a woman, mm. to be proud of enjoying the, uh, all the blessings mm. God has given, her, has given her. And the most important is to bear a child, to be a mother, mm. and to be a wife, and to be a daughter, and to be a sister. So. Unless you have this pride and confidence in yourself that comes from a great power, which is mm -hmm. God the Creator, I believe you cannot start building this dream as a vision. So as a personal vision, I had this since I was uh, a, a, an undergraduate student. Mm -hmm. I had the vision on a personal level. I want to have a family, I want to have uh, my children, I want to have a husband, I want to have a, a private, uh, uh, nice family life. Mm. Professional vision, I wanted to proceed with my career as a professor. I wanted to be useful in the society. I want to be, uh, to achieve a special uh, standard of professionalism. It wasn't easy, of nothing course. is easy. And on a national level, I wanted to add value to my country. Mm. I want to present my country internationally without, all, uh, without being well equipped mm. on a personal and professional level. You cannot go on international level. And this builds a strategy. Mm. So the strategy is you invest in yourself. Mm. You invest in your family. And the key word is integration and time management. I don't believe at all in separating your personal life from your professional life, from your uh, actual life, from uh, your international life, because it, you cannot live five lives at the same time. Mm. But if you integrate all this, while I was studying for my master's and my doctorate degree, I had my children studying with me, you know, for their own uh, homework and uh, all the assignments. While I was uh, building my, and investing, bringing up my children, investing in them in sports, in studies, I was doing my own sports as well, investing in my own health, mm. not only in their health. Mm. While I was helping my husband in his career, artistic career, and all what he was doing uh, in his life, I was building myself as well in studying very hard. So what the problem with many Egyptian women um, what, what they do once they get married, yeah. they build the husband, they build the children, and they, forget and they about go themselves. on, 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 mm. and they stay where they are. Yes. So they keep building, building, and they are where they are. So the gap increases. Mm. And this is very dangerous because while building, you have to build yourself. Exactly. While building others, build yourself. So you always be equal mm. and together on the same level of technology, on the same level of knowledge on the same level of awareness and, oh, and exposure to the world. Because the more you invest in yourself, the more confident you are, the more proud of yourself. And this, the more, um, the more you respect even yourself and your dignity. So you can be a better mother, you can be a better wife, you can be a better professional all over the world. And you can, pe you can compete professionally. You know, in many uh, international conferences I attend, I feel I'm, I'm really uh, uh, doing uh, uh, on an international level very, very easily. Mm. Why? Because of the investments uh, you have done.
done in yourself. So you work hard on yourself while working hard on everybody surrounding you. Okay, let me take it from here. You, you're saying that on the international level, it's much more easy. Is it because of uh, the support women get on the international level from uh, the people around them or the, 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 the belief in themselves is perhaps stronger than that of Egyptian women. I believe that here in Egypt, a woman, in order to be successful, she needs huge support from her family, from her husband, and it's, it's, a, it's a huge challenge for her. But on the international level or in Western countries, it's perhaps easier because of the culture of absolutely paying more respect yeah, to women. Yeah, but you know, in Egypt, I, I see many cases of successful Egyptian women doing great, but when I see their husbands, they are great husbands. Exactly. I believe that the greater the husband is, the greater the wife is. Of course. So, uh, and the more self-confident the husband is, the more giving the husband and the more tender and the more loving and the more caring for the wife to grow because he, he is self-confident. He doesn't have any inferiority complex. He doesn't have any problems by having his wife smart, professional, successful. Mm. And I've seen many cases in Egypt, honestly speaking. Mm. I pay tribute to so many uh, wonderful husbands who helped their wives to be great ladies, including uh, Minister Mervat Tilawi, mm. uh, Dr. Mushira Khattab, uh, Minister Faiza Bunaga, uh, uh, Chancellor Tahani Gibali. Mm. You have great ladies who have done great jobs and who have contributed a lot mm. for, uh, uh, for the country, whose husbands are wonderful men. This, unfortunately, is not a majority. It's a minority. Mm. However, in the Western world, this is the majority. Exactly. You see, mm. because of, of course, the, uh, the law gives a lot to human rights, uh, mm. to women's rights, because of the culture uh, uh, you know, they always tell you. Uh, I, I deal with many, for example, but many foreigners. Uh, Dr. Muna, do you think that the laws are not enough, or is it the problem of implementing these laws? It's everything together, mm. and I totally agree with uh, Minister uh, Mervat Tilawi. You know, she played a great role for women in the, cons the current constitution. So hopefully, we see some reinforcement of the those uh, constitution uh, supporting women's rights. Very so nice. we'll see, I hope, but it's also a culture yes. and it's rooted in the culture. It's of course, uh, religion uh, makes also a big difference here and different religions and the more tolerant people are, the more uh, you know, tolerant for women to take more um, aggressive place in the decision making. And I really hope that one day the decision making will be equal. I always say women and men are equal, yes. but different. I this, don't want this to is be what a man. I want to ask you about. I don't want to be a man. I'm why, very proud why, to be a woman. Despite the, the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the efficiency of so many Egyptian yeah. uh, women, uh, they are very smart, they are very yeah. uh, competent, they, uh, they, uh, they have huge potential, yet we don't see them in decision making positions. Why is This that? is a problem because it's a cultural program uh, it's a huge cultural problem. Religion has an aspect in it. Um, uh, it's uh, it's an that? attitude. It takes time. It mm. takes. We need more women. We mm. need more women to give some confidence to more men. You know that we're not competing with men. Women are not competing with men. Mm. Women are trying. It's 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 a partnership. It's not a competition. Mm -hmm. It's a partnership, hand in hand, especially that statistics show that more working, working women now support their families mm -hmm. than men. So uh, we, we need to accept this reality. So what we need to do is to show uh, media-wise, media has a great role, you see, visionary people. You need more men to support more women, like Qasim Amin, for example. We need. Mm -hmm more more men to support the role of women and the importance of and don't take women light women can change nations w women are the mothers and i always go back to this famous saying al umm madrasa in adatta adatta shaban tayyib al akhraq mothers are like are schools mm. if you give her all the uh, 
if we, if you equip her, mm. you can equip a whole nation of good ethics and manners. You see, so we need and this, this is that very needs important. This I is very important. This is very important also to differentiate, and, and there is a very thin line between loving and spoiling. Yes, love your children, bring up your sons and your daughters equally, but please don't spoil them. Yes. Discipline is extremely needed here. Mm. If if the son makes a mistake, he has to be uh, accountable for this. If the daughter, the same. Don't make a difference in the bringing up between uh, son and girls, uh, sons and daughters. The daughters go to the kitchen, the sons go and... Uh, no, this is, mm. this is not feasible anymore. This is dangerous. Equality Actually, is needed this in is, the bringing this up. This is presenting wrong conception about responsibility. Yeah. Here, I, I believe this is the mistake of Absolutely. many Egyptian mothers that yes, they, yeah. they, they have misconception about responsibility. It needs to change. The strategy itself, the, the country needs to change its strategy towards women. Yes. The media has to support professional women, not mm. just working women, professional women. They have to respect what is a professional woman. They have to give her all the rights to prove herself, not to prove vice versa, you see. Okay. So uh, women have, uh, have a great role and really change the world for much better world. Okay. As I was reading the, the press, uh, the news, you were here with me in the studio and there was a news item uh, that uh, the National Council for Women yes. is holding Very training good sessions news. Very good news. Uh, to, for managing election campaigns for female candidates. So do you expect in the upcoming period that we will see more female candidates running uh, yeah. for uh, the, uh, let's say, the parliamentary elections. I yes. don't expect that this in the presidential elections. I don't know why, uh, but I believe yeah. in the, they are preparing themselves for the parliamentary elections. I do expect mm. good number of professional women being part of the parliament. I mm. do expect this. Mm. And I'm sure because this will make a huge difference in the future of Egypt. Mm. And, uh, and since we are on Nile TV, which is the only Egyptian speaking channel, I believe, in Egypt and the yeah, Middle East, yeah. besides another one mm. uh, in English, mm. I feel that we should invest more and asking uh, Egyptian women living abroad to yes. support Egyptian women living in Egypt. This is very important. Arab women living abroad to support Arab women living in the Middle East. We need the, uh, the support of, of women together. And not just women alone, you, you know, this is very dangerous because this is not a feminist movement. Mm. I'm totally against those feminist movements that are against men. I'm not against men, on the contrary. Mm. Men are part of, uh, of, of women's lives and women are part of men's life. Mm. We cannot live without each other. We mm. complete each other. Exactly. We are in a great partnership. So if we build together and have these forces mm. joined, I believe we can do miracles mm -hmm. and we will have really uh, uh, great results. So uh, this is really, I, I take this, uh, I seize this opportunity to ask men and women mm -hmm. from Egypt and from the Middle East and from the world watching the Nile, Nile TV, which is uh, mainly watched by uh, li people living uh, abroad, yes. to support this attitude, to support the attitude that we are raising up now Egypt. Egypt is going into a new era. Mm. So without the support of women in this country, we have a problem. So please, men should support women and women should support women. Okay. Together we can make miracles. With this message, I would like to thank you very much, Dr. Mona Zaki, a professor of business at the American University in Cairo and strategic thinking and international marketing expert. Thank you very much for joining us and happy Women's Day. Thank you. Thank Same you very you. much.